Hello and good morning friends welcome to the CCA reset live lecture dear friends with our ongoing series on human resource management today we would be talking on compensation as a whole in the first session we would be discussing on uh, basic elements of compensation such as objectives uh, components and factors of uh, compensation whereas in the second half we would be discussing on methods of compensation and for this very discussion we have once again with us in our studios dr namita rashpoot dr namita rashpoot is the most appropriate person to talk on human resource management as she has authored books uh, on the topic that is human resource management uh, dr rajput is uh, currently uh, working as associate professor in department of uh, commerce sri aurobindo college university of delhi her immense experience would definitely help us out in understanding today's sessions topic that is compensation hello ma'am welcome to the edisit lecture good morning friends so today's lecture we'll be talking about the compensation as a whole now there is a, a very important observation which i have seen in the modern contemporary world that if you ask uh, especially the youngsters and who are uh, you know about to join the workforce or they are just completed their academic careers and qualifications so the first thing which they ask is if i join this job what i'm going to get out of it so this is the answer which on the first prevalence everyone is striving for and if the answer is yes that they are going to get a very good amount of salary in terms of cash and kind maybe a pick and drop service or maybe a free lunch or maybe some kind of uh, cash benefit so they are done for it and if uh, there is some kind of a dissatisfaction in terms of getting the amount from the services which they will be rendering to the organization they are not too happy with the Uh, joining that particular organization so this is uh, the important observation and the fact of today that gen y is all for money so you know the people who are watching this uh, live lecture they should not be feeling bad because there are so many empirical studies to counter this kind of an effect that yes the gen y that is the generation y and the younger generation which have just uh, joined the workforce they really want by the end of the day the good salary checks so starting with this backdrop let us now concentrate on the various and the basic concepts of the compensation so to begin uh, in an informal manner the people begin with an answer to answer this type of a question that what do i get from this before engaging themselves in any kind of a behavior therefore for the new employees something in return for the work done is a very important factor for them to join that particular organization or not and definitely the kind of the job which they choose will depend upon what is the amount of money they are getting from the kind of the work they will be contributing and doing for that particular organization so stemming from our knowledge of motivation and the behavior of the employees the people always work in order to satisfy their particular needs so the uh, coming on to the factors uh, of the compensation so compensation is basically there are so many factors which are contributing to the compensation which we will be discussing uh, as and when i proceed with my presentation so let us have some more deep insights of what compensation means it is basically the pay or the rewards or something which can satisfy the needs of the people so when you talk about the pay or the rewards uh, it is definitely a very important contributing factor and they feel happy being associated with that particular organization if they are getting the good amount of salary or the rewards so basically there is a basic salary component then we have a city compensatory allowance then we have other allowances a daily allowance and sometimes because of the rising prices we get the daily allowance allowance also so each and every allowance uh, and the perquisites which are being a part of the salary the the human being as a whole or an employee as a whole they feel very happy as and when the salary moves up so basically uh, it gives you an internal satisfaction that uh, even if you are having some kind of a physical and a mental fatigue also but by the end of the day if you're getting good amount of money you're happy being associated with that organization so the most obvious reward which an employee can bank on is the pay however the rewards also includes the promotion so they look for some kind of a promotion because they are putting in their best efforts so the compensation could also take a form of the promotion also and of 
course uh, enriching work experience because some people they join the particular organizations not only for money but yes the compensation can they can see in behind the veil in terms of getting a enriching work experience with a good name and the tag which that particular organization has because nowadays people go in for images they go in for brands they go in for good organizations who have a good name in the uh, in the industry and they feel very happy and satisfied if they are working in that particular type of a organization or definitely a kind of and a word of appreciation would also do a lot for them and they feel very motivated if they are working with that organization so pay is a reward and also a way how organizations establish the compensation reward system so definitely uh, having a reward system a good reward system is very important and a key component which is definitely a kind of a retention factor for the modern day people who are associated and working with that organization so compensation refers to a broad range of monetary as well as non monetary rewards given to the employees for the services rendered by them to the organization so definitely it's a kind of a give and take the giving is in terms of the services which the employees gives whereas in terms of receiving is the amount of money or the cash or the other non cash benefits which the employee is receiving from that organization so it includes not only the salary but the wages and other economic benefits such as paid holidays insurance transport housing facilities medical facilities and the retirement benefits now by the end of the day when you are uh, you have given your best to the organizations you have given your whole youth to the organization and you have been working from day and night and running from pillar to post to give a lot of benefits and the profits to the organization now is the time to retire from that organization so when you talk about the compensation the compensation also talks about the retirement benefit also that is the superannuation when you have completed your term in that organization so you must get enough money for you to spend your old age and uh, in terms of getting the securities because as a matter of fact the age makes everyone unfit after a particular age and uh, you are not able to work so at that point of time the amount which you're getting in terms of these uh, retirement benefits they will really uh, you know play a vital role in rest of your life so when an employee joins an organization so they see that what kind of retirement benefits will be given to them after they are done and after they are they have retired from that particular organization so overall we call it as a compensation package so the compensation package once again uh, just to have a recap of what we discussed includes the salary wages economic and non economic benefits uh, in terms of even the words of appreciation uh, some kind of a paid holidays the holiday picnics some kind of scholarships to their children of the employees and of course the medical and the retirement benefits they are overall uh, coming on to be a part of and they are enveloped in the term called compensation the compensation also includes such as the overtime uh, pay also because nowadays the the economic pressures are so much in the organization they have to sustain the organization they have to pay uh, a good amount of salary to the people so and uh, because of the competitive pressures the government pressures the social pressures the political pressures and the environmental pressure which is the biggest uh, pressure of today because we have to clean the and uh, make the environment green so you cannot do anything which is going to jeopardize the environment or because we do not have any planet b only planet a is there that is the earth so it is our moral responsibility also to do such endeavors which is going to uh, contain and save the environment so in in terms of this kind of backdrop of the pressures uh, so everyone is supposed to give some extra time to the organization and which is uh, a big thing for the employees because they have they have to cut on their time which they are spending with their families and the friends and of course for that uh, they should be given some kind of an extra benefit and we call it as a overtime uh, overtime pay and not only this the bonus the recognition awards the profit sharing uh, which is definitely very motivating for them that that is if you put some extra efforts to the organization and the organization because of your extra efforts is earning more so you have a, a you know a, you have a right 
on that profit also. So the government uh, now and then they also uh, in their government organizations they also announce some kind of uh, extra allowances to make their uh, employees happy. Similarly, when you talk about the private organizations, they have a very different and a very versatile and a very diverse way of satisfying their employees. So sometimes they uh, you know announce the Diwali bonanza or Christmas bonanza or some kind of a New Year benefits, some kind of bonus. You know you have to keep uh, announcing such uh, benefits uh, specifically in terms of the profit sharing and other benefits they must share it with the employees because eventually what the company is getting in terms of the profit is mainly because of the efforts which are behind the profits so they must be shared with the employees and that is uh, some kind of a ethical behavior also and uh, some kind of a just behavior also in uh, when you talk about uh, and as regards the employers of the organization so basically now Nowadays, uh, they are also, um, you know, talking about the employee stock option schemes also. So, people are given a share in the profit sharing also. They are given a stock options also. So, it is in terms of a motivating factor for them that yes, uh, if they are putting their best efforts, they would be getting the rewards also. And uh, nowadays, when we are living in a very socially connected world in terms of the social networking websites, so they try and declare about their company very publicly. So, the the public image uh, or will also depend upon how their employees are sharing their views on the internet blogs etc about the how the company is behaving in terms of giving them the compensation packages so money definitely is the most significant uh, we also call it as a vitamin m is definitely very significant important for everyone these days because without money nothing is possible and you cannot contain your and sustain your life because you are ha also having some kind of a family commitments so this is one factor which the employer must uh, see and it should not be overlooked in any case that yes the employees they are bound to you know uh, you know be with you only when they are satisfied in terms of the monetary and the compensation aspects. So the goals of the compensation management is to design the lowest cost pay structure that will motivate and retain the existing workforce and attract the fresh talent also. So the last line which I mentioned I would like to make a mention again that whosoever is designing and whosoever is responsible for framing the compensation policy must see this fact that the uh, the people who are working with the organization they are, they are happy with them and uh, it is not adequately uh, low and it should be adequate enough to take care of their responsibilities and not only this the packages which are being announced by the corporates it must be able to even attract the fresh talent they should not be uh, considering this fact that yes the company name is good the tag is good by, but by the end of the day the salary which they are going to get is bad uh, in terms or it is less so they will not be uh, now coming on uh, to that organization so this one factor has to be very specifically done that the existing workforce is happy and the uh, compensation is adequate and not only this uh, the young talent must also be attracted about the compensation packages which is announced by the company every now and then. So, there are certain uh, employee compensation decisions which uh, you know have a special mention here that the employee compensation decisions are very essential for the success of an organization because I told you that the main focus of uh, the workforce is eventually to get a good salary packages and if they are not getting it of course they will not be uh, you know be a part and they would not like to be a part uh, for that organization. So for the enduring uh, prevalence and for the enduring presence of that employee you need to announce some kind of a good compensation packages for them so as to motivate them number one and so as to retain them number two because motivation and retention is very important for the existing workforce and that can only come if you have a very good compensation policy for the organization. So the compensation may directly influence certain uh, core outcomes like job satisfaction, retention, performance, skill acquisitions, cooperation and flexibility. Now we are going to explain this point here that the compensation is de definitely uh, one thing which is going to motivate them 
which is going to retain them. Of course, some kind of uh, satisfaction, the job satisfaction is also the outcome of having a good compensation package which is announced by the company. So, and definitely if you are giving them the good salaries uh, to the employees, they will be able to sustain their lives very nicely. They will be uh, happy from inside and they would further try to acquire certain more skills so that the compensation packages could also be advanced and enhanced in the coming future so that they are able to fulfill their compensation goals and the career advancement goals. So, so they see their future also when the, uh, when the growth is there in terms of the compensation also. So, you have to link up the, the promotion plans with the compensation plans also because you understand that as and when you are going to upgrade yourself in terms of the skill development, in terms of the knowledge, in terms of the qualification requirement, you, you are going to be upper in the hierarchy and when you are there in the upper in hierarchy, the compensation also which you are going to get would be more. So, definitely this is a kind of a win-win situation for both for the company also and for the employees also because the company is getting their best skills uh, and they are able to get the best performance uh, increase. And similarly, the employee also is uh, having a, you know, a vital and important role because the person will now be an asset for the company. And of course, uh, uh, the skill advancement is also there for that person and eventually he will be getting more amount of money uh, from the organization and he is going to draw a more salary from that organization. So, it is considered to be the most important and the complex functions of the human resource management to determine the rates of the monetary benefits and is significant uh, for both the organization and the employees. So, studying the compensation from the company's perspective is to review its impact on the wide range of employees attitude and behavior and ultimately the effectiveness of the enterprise and its units. A good compensation packages includes the organization culture, the recruitment and selection of the competent employees and of course, the motivation and performance. So, these are the very important and the vital uh, you know, the compensation decisions which the corporates uh, have to take, uh, keeping into consideration the various parameters, various uh, frontiers which is going to affect uh, the employees to be there in the organization, to be motivated to the highest extent, to increase their performance, to increase their job satisfaction, etc. So, if any of the factor is ignored, so definitely there will be some kind of paucity into the framing of the compensation plans which is for which the corporates have to give a very big cost. Now, coming on to the definitional aspect since we have done in detail about the compensation and the various compensation decisions. So, now is the time to have a very comprehensive definitional aspect of the compensation. So, let us have a look here. The compensation represents both the intrinsic and the extrinsic rewards. When you talk about the intrinsic rewards, it is a praise, recognition and the pride in work which is qualitative in nature. So, we call it as intrinsic uh, factors whereas, when you talk about the extrinsic factors, we call about the pay, promotions, incentives and the benefits. So, employee receives for performing their job. So, this is a very vital and important definition that when you talk about the compensation, it has two various important components, intrinsic and extrinsic. The intrinsic is related to qualitative and extrinsic is related to quantitative. So, basically when you talk about the intrinsic, it cannot be measured, uh, quantify or quantify itself whereas, the, the qualitative uh, factors, they are having some kind of other factors which are also important for the organization. Like if you give a kind of a praise uh, for the services rendered by the employees, he will be very happy or if you recognize his work uh, in terms of giving some kind of an award to them, a recognition award to them and uh, definitely you announce uh, in front of everyone that yes, uh, uh, you are having a very good uh, compensation in terms of the work, etc. So, the employee receives the, uh, you know, the best uh, aspects keeping into consideration both the quantitative as well as the qualitative aspects. So, another definition uh, given by Denizi and Griffin, employee compensation refers to all forms of pay going to employees and arising from their employment. 
So, in both the definitions, you must have seen that there is an employment contract between the employer and the employee, and of course, the compensation has to be mentioned in the agreement that yes, you are supposed to do this kind of a work, and this is your job profile, this is your role and responsibilities, and for that, you will be offered this much salary. So, of course, say he agrees to it, he signs to it, and then he joins the organization. But that is the basic aspects, and uh, on the uh, on the preface of it, the organization. Uh, takes the particular employee, but for X uh, working uh, the X position, the uh, compensation would be an X amount. So, you agree and then you join the organization. But by the end of the day, when you are a part of the organization, you are on the payrolls of the organizations, you are putting in the best efforts, you want something beyond that. So, the compensation is not only the salary and the pay and the packages, it involves something extra. That is, if you are putting some extra benefit, uh, I mean, efforts to give the benefits to the organization, your efforts must be recognized, your salary, etc., would be given, uh, you know, more. Uh, uh, importance, uh, your recognition of the work should also be given more importance in terms of certain announcement of the bonus and extra payments which should be a part and parcel of the compensation policies. Now what are the objectives of compensation? So let us have a look in detail about the objectives of compensation and as an HR student you must understand that what are the basic factors behind framing the compensation. So the first is attract and retain the qualified employees. Now, compensation helps to attract the competent and the qualified employees uh, to the organization and the, when the organization offers a high level of salary and pay certain more monetary benefits, it can attract a large number of qualified and the new incumbents because they feel encouraged because everything centers around money. And for them, because they are the young talent and slowly they want to come out of the grip of their parents, they want to be independent in terms of uh, their uh, economic uh, aspects and they do not want to be on the, you know, the pocket money anymore. So for them, the most important motivating factor is the pay package. So you have to understand and center around the younger and the talented and the dynamic workforce that if you want to attract these people, you need to give them some kind of benefits in terms of the salary which should be offered at the entry level. Because our generation that is the generation Y is basically for money. Besides other factors, they are dynamic, they are smart, they are strategic decision maker, they understand what the do's and the don'ts in their life are. But yes, when you talk about the retention and the motivation aspect of an employee, uh, of the new employee and the dynamic and a young employee, for them offering a good amount of money would be the best uh, motivating factor to attract these kind of people. So, the next is providing fair internal pay structure. Although retaining the worker is contingent on the various factors, the compensation policies are formed to maintain a fair internal pay structure and provide many benefits. Any kind of anomaly or bias in the pay structure suggests of an unethical organization. The management should take various steps to ensure that the internal pay structure is fair and transparent. So, there are certain other objectives of the compensation also is basically about motivating employees also which has already been discussed in detail and of course, uh, the next factor uh, which is also one of the objective of the compensation is the minimization of the cost. You must understand the various perspective. There is a perspective uh, from the employer point of view, there is a perspective from the employee point of view. The employer always wants to give less whereas employee always wants to get more. So, there has to be a tussle and there has to be a complete trade off which is judicious and rationally done so that not uh, any of the front suffers. So, the basic compensation objective is to minimize the cost that, that is you are having the best talent with you and uh, on the other on the flip side of it you are paying less amount to the uh, to the employees also, but it should not be very less because otherwise they will not be uh, you know ready to be uh, or continue to be a part of that organization anymore and it would lead to the labor turnover which is again a big cost for the organization. The next is to enhance the productivity. You understand that uh, when you get a good amount of uh, compensation. Uh, you feel motivated and you always try to increase the productivity because by the end of the day, you understand the psyche of the management and the management understands the psyche of the employee that both wants money. 
uh, of course the management wants more production which is again indirectly the money and the employee also wants money which is again a direct money because he has to sustain his personal and professional life both so now uh, basically we have talked about the concept the basic factors the definitional aspect of the uh, of the compensation plans so in the later part of my lecture i would be talking about the components of the employee and the types of the employee structure i hope you understand this very well and for any queries you can contact me thank you so much Hello viewers so in the part of this lecture i would be talking about the objectives and the types of the compensation plans in the earlier part of the lecture we covered the basic insights and the components of the compensation plans i hope that was clear to you so taking my presentation forward let us now discuss on the objectives of compensation so the compensation uh, function definitely it contributes uh, to the organizational effectiveness in the following basic ways number 1 attract and retain the qualified employees so definitely it is one of the prime factors that if you want to retain the qualified employees you must give them good salaries and the compensation packages otherwise they would like to because there are there are so many options these days available online also and they can generate the money and then generate the uh, compensation etc anywhere so unless and until you offer them some kind of good incentives uh, plans in terms of the Uh, packages of their salary that you will they will not be able to sustain the organization the second is providing fair internal pay structure although retaining workers is contingent on many factors but yes uh, if you give them some kind of a fair amount they would like to always be a part of the organization the next is to motivate the employees and uh, definitely it is one of the motivating strategies that you keep announcing certain uh, you know besides your basic salary etc certain kinds of incentives to them so that they feel happy and they always are connected uh, to the organization and they do they will not leave that particular organization the minimization of cost we have already been discussed and for enhancing the productivity because a motivated workforce will always be uh, putting their heart and soul to increase the compensation and increase the productivity etc so let us now do the component part of the employee compensation now let us have a look on this the elements of employee compensation are as follows the first is the base compensation the base compensation involves the financial benefits given to the employees in the form of wages and salaries so this is the prime factor that when you talk about uh, the base compensation we always talk about the salary and the wages now it is amount fixed paid to the employees by employer in return to the work performed by them you must understand that the salary and the wages is connected to the 
contribution in terms of the services or rendered by them. The term wage denotes the amount paid to the worker who performs the physical or the manual work, whereas uh, it could be hourly, it could be weekly, it could be monthly, etc. So, when you talk about the low grade people in the organization who are lower in the hierarchy and who are basically into the operational aspects, they are given the salary. And whereas the white collared people are always offered a salary because it is not connected to their hourly basis or their daily wages, etc. So, it is uh, the term is used for the blue collar uh, when you talk about the wages and the term uh, salary is associated with the white collars when you talk about the salary packages. So, we are having both the people in our organization and both are vital for the organization. So, we must understand the basic difference between the wages and the salaries. Wages are for the blue collar people who are lower in hierarchy whereas salary is offered for the white collar people who are upper in hierarchy. So, let us uh, do the, uh, the components of the employee compensation. So, this is a very important slide in front of your screens that employee compensation has four basic parts. First, basic pay. Number two, allowances. Number three, fringe benefits. And the next is your incentives. So, we'd, we would now be discussing all of these one by one. So, let us do the first component that is the basic pay. So, basic pay is uh, it means the basic salary or the pay scales for the related jobs and it, it relates to the monetary benefits which is given like as a salary or a wage. Again salary and wage I have already been discussed that wages is for the blue collared people and the salary is for the white collared people. So, it is the first component of the compensation package that is when you talk about the basic pay. The next is your allowances. Allowances uh, are a percentage of a basic pay pay for example you are working uh, in a very good city so you would be getting a city compensatory allowance because the cost of living in that city would be higher so people who are working in metropolitan cities would be more as compared to the small cities in India etc. So basically when we talk about India in specific and in general we say that the cities who are having a good cost of living and a higher dear cost of living will be given more allowances compared to those uh, where the cost of living is little low. So, here when you are living in a metropolitan and a cosmopolitan lifestyle, the, the rents also you have to pay more. So, you, you will be given the house rent allowance, you will be given a transport allowance, you will be given a city compensatory allowance which has already been discussed. Next is your fringe benefits. These are those benefits and facilities which are given to the employees in addition to the basic pay and the allowances. For example, uh, you have a medical aid, you have a subsidized food you may be given interest free loans. So, all these things they you know they are parametized in such a way that they always contribute as a motivating factor for them because again uh, if these benefits and these allowances are not given to the employee then it is an out of pocket cost they have to spend from their basic salaries which nobody wants. So, everybody wants to look for a job in which the allowances and the, uh, the fringe benefits are always there. So, must remember that the fringe benefits are over and above your basic salary and allowances. Next is your incentives. Incentives are a part of the compensation which is given to the employees to motivate them for example profit sharing, bonus, compensation based on the turnover achieved. Now as a matter of fact many organizations uh, nowadays they offer some kind of uh, incentives to them like if you try and achieve your target before time this would be given if you are able to hit the target in terms of these turnover and the sales this will be given. So, they try to reach the target because ultimately everybody wants to increase the compensation and the salary aspects of the organization. So, all these four parts so let us have a recap of all the four the first was the basic pay. The second was allowance, the third was fringe and the last was incentive. Basic pay is the total basic amount whereas uh, the allowances are as a percentage of the basic allowance and when you talk about the fringe benefits it is even over and above the basic salary and the allowances whereas incentives is apart from all these that is you are given either a profit sharing or uh, maybe a commission because you are able to hit your target. So, here you have to hit your target and once you hit your target you would be given an add on amount which is called as the incentives. Now, coming on to the basic factors of uh, factors affecting compensation that is what are the basic factors which are responsible for framing your compensation packages. 
The first is the demand and supply. Of course, this demand and the supply principle is very prevalent and known to everyone. And as a commerce student, so as, as a management student, you also must be knowing that anything which is more in demand and less in supply, you have to pay more and vice versa. So you have to see this market principle of demand and supply so as to frame the wages for them. The second, second is your ability to pay. Now see, there are organizations with the diverse uh, financial status with them. Those who can afford will definitely pay more. Those who cannot will always try to give and optimize the cost factor for it. And definitely each organization has its own pros and cons and they have their own particular features. So we cannot have a common ball fitting to all. So your ability to pay also plays a very vital role in terms of dispersing the payment to them. Next is your prevailing wage rate. Now see every now and then the government also announces the basic uh, wage rate structure for them that you cannot be lower than this amount per day or lower than the X amount per day because uh, you have to take care of the, of the people also. So we have a minimum wage act. The legislative and the judicial aspect cannot be ignored in any case. But yes, if you see the corruptive and the bureaucratic uh, policies that is you if you try to see behind the veil there are a lot of bad practices which are and a misconduct which is done by these people that is they take the signatures on the higher amount whereas they pay the lower amount because if you are not uh, willing to sign on the lower amount they would say that we have a line uh, you know standing outside our gates if you are not willing you can go out the other persons can come in so these kind of uh, practices are always there then of course the trade union words uh, also play a very vital role in fixing their uh, amount because the trade unions are always for the workers and they are uh, definitely a good uh, kind of a representative in the hands of the management of the people of the employees that yes if you are uh, you know offering them some kind of a less amount they are, they will intervene and they will always try to take out the maximum amount for the benefit of the workers the next is your productivity of course the more you produce the more compensation you will get and the last is your cost of living. The cost of living also plays a very vital role because you have to see what kind of dearness factors are there, what kind of uh, you know prices are prevailing. So you have to link your salary with the price index because otherwise they will not be able to sustain. Then we have the state regulations which also play a vital role. And of course the organizational provisions are there and a job analysis. The job analysis is also playing a very vital role to fix up the compensation because uh, the job analysis describes each and every job for which uh, the salary would be fixed. If you are upper in hierarchy, the role responsibilities would be more and you would be given the more packages. And if you are at a lower in hierarchy, of course, you will be pay, uh, given a less amount for the salary. So these were the factors. Uh, which play a vital role. So let us have a recap because they are very important uh, from the examination point of view also. Like the first uh, factor was demand and supply. The second was ability to pay. The next is your prevalent wage rates. Then is the trade unions. Then is your productivity. The next is your cost of living. The state regulations, organizational provisions and the job analysis also they play a very vital role in the uh, in fixing the compensation for the employees. So let us now <coughs> discuss <coughs> the methods of the wage payment. There are two types of methods. Let us have a look on this. The first is your time wage. The second is your piece wage method. So let us now discuss what is a time wage method. Under this method, the wages are calculated on the basis of time spent on a job by the worker irrespective of the amount of the work done. It can be an hour, a day, a month or a week. It is the oldest and the most widely used method of the wage payment used by many organizations. When the quality of work is considered more important, the wages are paid as per the time. For instance, a worker is paid at a rate of 100 per hour and he has spent 100 hours. So his monthly salary would be 10,000. So this is uh, one of the very uh, prime and a very contemporary, uh, I mean not contemporary, it's a traditional method and uh, which everyone is uh, you know happy about it because you have to spend an X amount of hours in them. And uh, definitely when you talk about the quality in productivity, then you must pay them per hour because uh, the quality otherwise would be hampered and it will be jeopardized if you're trying to uh, you know produce more and more without taking care of the quality aspects of course then it is a problem for the organization 
So what are the advantages of a time wage method? Number one, it is a very simple method. It is a very easy to understand method and the workers, uh, they feel secured when they are paid as per the time. The quality of the work done by the workers would also be excellent because they are spending good amount of time to produce the quality uh, production for the organization. And of course, the trade union system also ensures a stable income to the employees. So, uh, the trade unions are also satisfied if the workers are paid according to the time wage method. Then it is a very easy method to adapt for the various kinds of the job in an enterprise. So, coming on to the disadvantages of this particular type of a method. Number one, a very close supervision is required. Otherwise, uh, you know, there is a saying that everyone has an inherent disliking for work. So, even if you call the people on a daily basis, you have to keep a supervision on them so that they are not wasting their time. So, a close supervision cost increases uh, when you talk about the time wage method. Number two, it results in inefficiencies as the worker are doing their work very slowly. Another drawback of the system is that it leads to low productivity because uh, they are not bothered about the number of units produced. We are bothered about the quality of the units produced. So here the efficiency goes down and the people growth is retarded in this case because they are not putting efforts to increase their production. They are just putting the efforts to spend their time, number one, and to produce the quality work. And next is there is no relationship between the wages and the productivity, which is definitely very unfair. Because if the persons are producing more, they are also given the same. If the pro people are producing less, then also there is they are going to be paid the same. So, coming on to the next method that is the peace wage method. As the name suggests, the peace wage method is the, the amount of the wages which will be given according to the number of units produced. So, the people who are efficient uh, and they are trying to produce more units will be paid more compared to those people who are producing less will be paid less. So, this is one of the uh, most beautiful uh, factor in this uh, peace wage method is that the efficiency is recognized the speed is recognized and of course uh, the people will try to achieve more and more so it is a kind of a win-win situation for the organization also because the organization is also looking for more production and good performance. So you are able to achieve both factors in case of the peace wage method. The incentives are also given to them, the good compensation will be given to them and everyone will try to be a star performer when you talk about uh, if they are paid according to the peace wage method. So, let us do this in detail. Under the peace wage system, the workers are paid according to the output produced by them irrespective of the time taken for the production. The wages which are paid to the workers are determined on the basis of the unit of uh, output or a per piece. The rate is fixed per piece of the work. And earning or income of the worker depends on their efficiency and speed of the work. The wages are calculated by multiplying the number of units produced by the rate per unit which amounts to the total earning of the worker. This may be through the following two systems, a street, straight piece work and next is your differential piece work. When you talk about the straight piece work, it is, uh, you know, you fix up the amount per unit and uh, the amount will be paid. When you talk about the differential, then this method the wages is paid in relation to uh, the wages per unit decreases and increases in the production. That is, if you produce more, you will be paid more. If you produce less, it will be paid less. The next is your balance method. Let us have a look on this and do this method in detail because it is a combination of the piece wage as well as the time wage method. So, let us have a look on this. This method is a combination of time wage and the piece wage method. In this method, a worker is paid a fixed amount based on the time with the provision of the piece wage method also. How? This is just like a minimum rent with the provision of short working, recoupment in case of royalty and if a worker produces the less quantity in a period, he is given wages as per time, rate and excess payment over piece wage is treated as a credit. This credit is compensated in the period when he or she produces more than time wages. Thus, he is given a time wage whether he produces more or less. This will be clearer from an example. So, let us take an example here. Suppose the time wage is 500 per week 
and the piece wage is rupees 10 per week. As he produ produces his wages during the 4 weeks will be shown in this table. So, let us have a look on this table. In the first week the time wage is always 500. The production you can see in the differences form. In the first week it was 54, in the second week it was 48, in third it was 50 and in the last it was 51. The piece wage method is 540 because he produces the production and the credits he is given as 40 and the balance that is uh, in case of the combination of the two is getting 40. And in the second it will be 20, in third also it will be 20 and in fourth it will be 30. So, you can see a comparative figures uh, in case of this method that is each method has its own pros and cons. But yes, uh, people look in for their specific needs, the organization go in for a specific need, the factors, the type of the workforce you have, the kind of demand and the supply factors which we discussed the factors. So, they also played a very important role in selecting which kind of a method will the organization will be following. So, basically when you talk about the balance method, this method ensures the worker the receipt of a fixed amount because you are given a combination of both time wage and the piece wage. The time wage gives you an X amount which is fixed forever whereas it varies with the level of production which you do. So, here you have a security also in terms of getting the amount whereas uh, some kind of incentives are also recognized because your salary is linked with the level of production which you do. Now, what are the advantages of a piece wage method? Number one, it motivates the workers. Number two, less supervision is required because your performance will be judged according to the number of units produced. So, you need not be bothering them and again and again, you do not have to oversee their performance again and again. So, there is a less supervision cost here. It is easy to calculate because it is per unit. It provides an incentive because uh, it also differentiate between the type of the workers as efficient workforce and inefficient workforce. And this method is suitable when the large production is required because here there is no other way besides the piece wage method which could be more helpful for the organization to achieve the production at a higher rate. Now there are certain disadvantages of the piece wage method also because your quality factor is completely ignored. And the excessive work uh, can uh, on the employees can put him into a bad health. There could be a conflict between the efficient workers and an inefficient workers which is again a bad sign for the organization. And when the uh, workers wants to earn more, it affects the quality aspects. So, seeing it is uh, you know factors and uh, you know which are uh, for it and against it, let us have a comparison of the time wage and the piece wage. So, this is the basic thing which every HR student must understand. The first is uh, the basis of the difference, it is on the payment. In time weight, it is based on the time spent. In the piece wage, it is on the number of units produced. The quality of the work factor is good in case of time, it is not good in case of piece wage. A very close supervision is required in time wage, whereas less uh, supervision is required in case of piece wage. Uh, the trade union support this system because uh, you know job security is there whereas the trade union oppose this system because the wages are not fixed. The production our uh, wages are not linked with productivity whereas the earnings are linked with the productivity. So, having a comparison of both the time wage and the piece wage we can say we can uh, have a combination of the two because the combination of the two can also give you the best result. There is a job security, there is a fixed amount which the workers would be getting and of course, uh, the recognition of the efficiency is also there because if you produce more, your salary would also be more. So, let us now discuss uh, certain incentive plans that is in case of a combination, we have certain incentive plans which are very famous across the globe. So, we are, uh, we will be discussing four plans, the Halse, Rowan, Immersion and Budux plan. So, we will be discussing each one of these slowly. The first is your Halse plan. Let us have a look on this because this is little technical in nature. You must understand the formula for calculating the compensation as per the Halse plan. Under the Halse plan, minimum wages are guaranteed to each worker. The standard time is fixed for the worker. If the worker finishes the work before the standard time, they are given a bonus. But there is no penalty if they fail to do that. So, it is a very uh, you know good method to calculate that is some kind of a standard time is given to them and uh, if the worker is given uh, the opportunity to complete before the standard time then the bonus will be given. So, this is an incentive straight incentive because they are optimizing on the time and if they are not able to produce uh, uh, in that particular standard time and not able to save that standard time but no penalty will be imposed onto the worker. 
The next is your Rowan plan. Let us have a look on this. It is a modification of the Halse plan. It also guarantees the minimum wages and does not penalize the slow workers. The standard time is fixed and the bonus is paid on the basis of time saved. So here we are given a, a kind of a formula. The total wages W is equal to T into R plus T into R into time saved divided by standard time. The standard time here will be, this is just an example, 15 hours. The time taken is 10 hours. The rate of wages is 10 per hour. So the bonus would be time saved upon standard time. So then the wages would be rupees 133. So all these uh, incentive plans uh, are more or less, you know, doing focus on the time saved and optimizing on the cost, but also giving the incentive to the efficient workers because they are doing certain out of job work. They are trying to optimize on the cost. They are trying to optimize on the time. So basically, uh, minimum security is always given to them in case of incentive plans plus over and above the amount which is time saved that is above the standard time will also be given to them. So let us now discuss the third plan that is the immersion plan. In this plan, the minimum wages again is guaranteed to the workers. Uh, efficiency is measured on the basis of comparison of actual performance with the standard performance, which is fixed. So any deviation is there. Uh, if the efficiency is 100%, the bonus will be given at 20%. And above 100%, it would be 30%. So the bonus goes on increasing as in when you are saving the time. Now the last plan is Budux plan. Under this minute, a minute is the time unit described as a standard minute. The standard time for each job is fixed under taking time and motion study expressed in terms of B. The standard time for a job is fixed of the B's allowances to complete it and generally the bonus paid to the worker is 75% of the wages of the time saved. The rest 25% goes to the foreman because he is giving a lot of supervision to the employees. So here the above discussion the wage plan methods were fixed on the basis of time while the wage methods based on productivity are going on. So we can have a look on this. The kind of incentive plans, the one is individual and the other is a group. When you talk about the individual, it is based on time and uh, on the basis of productivity. The time saved, we have discussed the four plans, the Halse, Rowan, Immersion and Budux. Whereas on the basis of productivity, we will now be discussing on Taylor, Merrick plan and the Gantt plan. And when you talk about the group incentive plans, we have a Priestman plan, profit sharing and this Canon plan. So the uh, next is your production based productivity of the incentive plans. So in the earlier part, we discussed uh, which is on the optimizing of the time, but here we are centering around the, uh, the productivity. So let us have a look on this. Under this method, the incentive plan, a standard output is fixed and the workers are paid on the basis of production. They are given incentives if they are able to produce more units than the standard fixed. It includes the three plans, Taylor, Merrick and the Grant plan. So first let us discuss on the Taylor's plan. Now basically it is a kind of a scientific treatment for each work, the motion study, the fatigue study, the time study is undertaken and every step is scientific in nature. So you fix up the amount on the basis of all these studies which you have undertaken and then the amount of the wages would be given to them. So it is basically influenced by the scientific methods. So in this plan, the tailor did not give minimum guarantee to each worker, whereas it is possible to calculate the standard overload for each worker on the basis of the time and the motion study has already been discussed and finally and eventually the amount uh, of the wages would be calculated. The next is your Merrick's multiple piece wage plan. So let us have a look on this. Under this plan, there are three great uh, piece rate methods which are given to the tailor. Workers who produce less than 83 are paid the basic piece wage rate. The workers who produce between 83 to 100 percent will be paid 110 per rate. The workers who produce more than 100 and uh, up to 120 percent of the basic. So this system is an improvement of the tailor plan but this method also does not give a guarantee minimum wages to the workers. All the workers producing between 1 to 82 percent of the standard output are considered same and paid at a piece weight rate. So let us now discuss the last method that is the Gantt's plan. Under this method, the minimum wages are guaranteed to the worker 
and if the worker fails to complete the task within the standard time he receives only a wages on the basis of the time spent by him not on the basis of uh, the production which he has done but if he completes the task within some uh, within the stipulated period of time he gets an extra bonus so this is definitely an improvement overall and this is prevalent method and a group uh, incentive plans will now be discussed uh, first is your priestman second is your profit sharing and the next is your scalon plan the in the in the group incentive plans the first is your priest method uh, in this the bonus is increased in proportion to increase in the output so it is straight away linked with the production when the production increases the the uh, uh, amount of incentives also increases in case of profit sharing this is also a very wonderful uh, concept that is to share the profits uh, when the profits uh, i mean when the production is increased and the last is your scanlon plan in this method the bonus is paid in proportion to the production that is 1% bonus if 1% increase in the production takes place so this was all about uh, you know the methods which we talk about uh, uh, in terms of the compensation and the fringe benefits and definitely the uh, the fringe benefits which is over and above the salary etc they are played a very important role and also the retirement benefits the performance link benefits have already been discussed and uh, definitely we now come on to the last part that is the compensation structure a sound compensation structure should be based on job evaluation program which is fixed by the corporate uh, i mean you should be able to give and establish the fair differentials in the payment and you are able to recognize the uh, the the difference between the efficient worker and an inefficient worker so you must see the organizational ability to pay the demand and the supply factor of the labor the prevalent market rate the cost of living the productivity the trade union bargaining power and the managerial attitude and psychology and the psychological and the sociological factors uh, which is going to affect your compensation factors so as a matter of whole overall all these factors they play a very vital role in fixing the compensation plans whether the compensation should be paid on the basis of time or the piece wage will depend upon what type of workforce you have whether it is efficient or it is inefficient whether you are giving more uh, emphasis on the on the quality then of course the time wage is better if you are giving more emphasis on the on the on the quantity then of course the the piece wage method would be better because you are you giving them and offering them the incentive so they will be putting their heart and soul to increase the production levels and take it to new heights so all these factors uh, Uh, factors they are you know key for the organization and should not be ignored whatever compensation policies are framed should be framed keeping into consideration each and every factor which has even a small impact on the labor turnover because labor turnover in any case should be avoided to avoid this uh, we have to give them some kind of good compensation plans thank you so much With this note, thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again for the precious session. And dear friends, in this session today, we discussed on compensation as a whole, and we believe that uh, this lecture uh, would have uh, appeared to be very, very. crucial for you very fruitful for you and uh, if you have any suggestion queries or any kind of feedback then you can mail us at info.cc at retainic.in and uh, we are planning to conduct more session under the series human resource management we would be meeting again tomorrow and also and uh, would be discussing on more topics um, under the series as i already said so uh, if you want to see the lectures the lectures are already there for you on youtube concerning the series human resource management and uh, with this note we would like to take your leave thank you thank you so very much thank you ma'am